Beatles for sale. Oh, hello there. Me name's Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255. And I want to talk about one of my favorite albums by the Beatles. I love this album, man. Beatles for sale. Well, it's more like I like this time period. Uh, the little period after A Hard Day's Night and before Help. A very interesting period in Beatles history, 1964. They were writing all these songs that were really good, solid songs, but they weren't really hit songs. At 1-800-449-8255, The Clark the Shark Show, The Wolfman Jack on Crack, and I'm coming to you in the wee hours of the morning, Monday morning, March 6th, 2023. It's like 5 or 6 in the morning. This is George, and I want to talk about Beatles for Sale. This album, in this time period for the Beatles, was amazing. I liked A Hard Day's Night. Of course, uh, the Beatles went to another level there. And I love the help recording session with, you know, all the killer songs from that movie help. But there's something about this second half of 1964 when George and these other, other three lads were recording Beatles for Sale. I love Beatles for Sale, man. Uh, when I was a little kid over in America, um, you know, we had Beatles 65 and Beatles 6 and... <laughs> We had all these other Beatles albums that were just a mishmash of, you know, they combined like 1964 and 65 Beatles, and you can't do that because they're different. And it's just a, you know, like the song Yes It Is got mixed up uh, away from Help, I think. It was on Beatles 6, or John would be on stage, he'd be like, I don't know, I don't own it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just so sad that how the Beatles albums in England versus America they're just different George would have to agree I wish all the Beatles albums just could have been consistent where you release an album in England you know in 1963 and then you just release the same album over in America they didn't do that and it's a tragedy because the Beatles record collection is just a mess. I mean, it's just, you know, the real albums in England are often totally different from those albums in America. You know, for example, the Rubber Soul that I listen to, I actually like more the American version of Rubber Soul than the, the one from England. But what do I know? I'm just Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255. The Clark the Shark Show. Little Sharky's Underground Garage. Well, today I'm talking about Beatles. This band, this amazing band from Liverpool, made all those people twist in corduroy. And all they gave us was a little rope with a little metal, said MBE member of the British Empire. Not much for four lads from Liverpool, but I guess we'll have to take it. And when I was a little kid, I remember the 1964 period. You know, I was like, you know, 1975, I was like 10, you know, 74, 9. I really loved all the Beatles albums, but there was something about No Reply, I'm a Loser, you know... I don't want to spoil the party, so I'll go. Ah, there's something about the Beatles for sale, period. Now, of course, today on YouTube and around the world, you've got these Beatle experts. They were born in 2007, 
or 2009, and they, they know how to review the Beatles, of course, because they were born in 2011. They know way more about the Beatles than Clark the Shark will ever know, you know, about George and, and all the boys. And I'm like, yeah, man, you're born in 1998, and you're going to tell me, oh, how you think Beatles for Sale sucks, and and you're an expert. Well, you know, it's weird. I kind of agree in a way, because I wish I could go back to 1965, and I wish the Beatles would listen to me and quit with all the cover songs that they do. You know, that I like the Beatles originals, man. And when the Beatles started doing Help, Rubber Soul, and Revolver, it was all going original. But this is like the last album, and it could have been the best Beatle album. Uh, but it's, you know, as great as this period is, and as great as this album is, and and I'll say the same for Beatles 6 and Beatles 65, and the confusing albums o over in America, Beatles Story, and <laughs> it's just completely confusing the emi parlophone versus capital emi in america just what a mess man they've just fucked up the beatles so bad you know but the official real beatles is you know the ones in england but to me you know rubber soul in america is the better rubber soul than the english version but what do i know i'm just clock the shock at 1-800-449-8255 the clark the shark show the Wolfman Jack on crack. What the fuck does he know anyway about Beatles? I wasn't born in 2008. And I'm not hip with today's indie hip-hop kids who are on TikTok. They know so much more about the Beatles than I'll ever know. I mean, I'm just, you know, like Clark the Shark. I'm just a step away from little Steven's underground garage in fact i'm just sharky's underground garage I and mean, it's just a guy that's 58 who you know grew up listening to the beatles what do i know i don't understand paul paul doesn't understand me bloody it doesn't understand me but i kind of understand beatles for sale this time period and how much better this album could have been but to me, because I respect the songwriting in this period so much, I classify Beatles for Sale as one of the best Beatles albums right there with Rubber Soul. Even if it really isn't, I still say, ah, man, I love Beatles for Sale because of what it could have been had it been all original. And if they just would have listened to Clark the Shark, I told these guys, I told them back in 64, George, don't do covers like Kansas City, hey, 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 and everybody wants to be me, baby. <laughs> but the Beatles didn't listen to me. They want to do cover because they're like, well, we get paid more royalties, Clark the Shark, if we do cover. I'm like, no, I think you get paid less royalties that way at 1-800-449-8255. That's just what Capital EMI Parlophone wanted. They want the Beatles to do cover so they can pay people royalties or something like that. I don't know. But Beatles for Sale should have been one of the greatest Beatles albums. And in fact, I feel, Clark the Shark feels... Beatles for Sale is right there with Revolver and all of them as one of the best Beatles albums. Not because it is one of the best Beatles albums, but because the potential, the idea, the concept. You know how the Who really aren't one of the world's greatest bands at all? But the idea of the Who, these four guys who are so loud on stage, smashing their gear... It's the concept of The Who, you know, they're so great. I mean, Led Zeppelin really isn't as great as Deep Purple or a lot of bands, you know. You know, in a lot of ways, they're just overrated and bloated. But the idea of Led Zeppelin is kind of like the idea, the concept of The Who. That's what it's all about, you know. It, you respect the concept. And there are bands that are great. They're physically great, like Rush and Sticks and Uriah Heep that don't make mistakes, that are incredible bands. 
you know, they're really incredible bands and, you know, they have it all. They're funny. They're, they're really incredible. They sound great live. They have a great live show, you know, like Genesis with Peter Gabriel, even Genesis with Phil, you know, there's something to be said, but then there's things where it's conceptually great. Now in the arena of albums that are conceptually the idea, like the idealism, the idea that it's a great album, Beatles for Sale is number one in that class, in that category. I like the songs on this album more than Rubber Soul or Revolver or A Hard Day's Night or, you know, With the Beatles or any of that. I, you know, there's something about Beatles for Sale and this time period, 1964, that will always be very special to me, Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255 on the Clark the Shark show. You're not in heaven, but right now you're in Beatles heaven with George, with him and the Beatles on the Clark the Shark show. 1-800-449-8255. I'm going to break down this Beatle album. It better get all five stars, man. That's all I got to say. Don't give it less than five stars <laughs> you know i hate today's young people they don't know anything and they influence these idiots you know all music gave it five but then it gets a three it's it another three you know three and a half you know but i'm going to give you the real review of beatles for sale i'm going to give you the only review you'll ever need from clark the shark and no reply starts out with one of the greatest Beatles songs ever by John. No replies. Amazing, amazing, amazing song. And of course, I'm a Loser. Awesome. Both of these are like Baroque pop acoustic. Uh, almost like experimental garage rock or something that's clean, though. You know, clean electric guitar. Just beautiful melodies, atmospheric harmonies and Oh, man, right away, you got two great Beatles songs right out of the canon. And it's the concept. Remember, it's what the Beatles were doing here with this sub Bob Dylan acoustic, uh, kind of trying to write these great lyrics about being a loser. So it's great, man. And of course, Babies in Black, killer song, man. Awesome. These first three Beatles songs are all amazing. You know, now, if there's a weak moment, it might be rock and roll music, you know, the Chuck Berry song. But I actually like it. I like the Beatles version of rock and roll music. You know, I'm not going to knock it too much. The same way I like Twist and Shout. The Twist and Shout by the Beatles is so good. It, it almost seems like a Beatle original. And I almost say that about rock and roll music. I like the Beatles version of rock and roll music a, a real lot. I love it. I'll follow the sun, you know. You know how I feel about Paul McCartney. I'm not wild about Paul McCartney, and his songs are fucking lame. And I'll follow the sun is just shit. You know, I don't like this song. But, you know, because it's on Beatles for Sale with these great songs, No Reply, I'm a Loser, Babies in Black, I accept I'll follow the sun. You know, and I'll even find myself li listening on the road, listening to me song on the radio club. Yeah, Paul, I'll listen to All Follow the Sun. You know, it's not one of my favorite Beatles songs. And I know all of you are expecting Clark the Shark to hate Mr. Moonlight, but I don't. Yeah, it's a good vocal performance by John. Uh, he's, he's good on that. Jo George, you know, and John's like, hey. I'm pouring me heart and soul into Mr. Moonlight. I mean, admittedly, it's not one of the Beatles' greater songs. There's something about it that I will accept, you know, but I understand if people hate it, why they hate it, you know. Maybe sort of like rock and roll music and the, you know, the McCartney stinker, I'll follow the sun. You know, Mr. Moonlight takes, it might, you know, George would say, yeah, it takes takes abuse from critics and fans alike, you know, but I don't know, man. I find myself always listening to the whole Mr. Moonlight whenever I hear it. And Kansas City, hey, 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 of course, 
one of the worst Beatles ideas ever. It's, of course, it's Paul McCartney doing it. You know when the Beatles suck, it's always Paul McCartney. But I'd have to say on side one, four of these seven songs are, are good. And, you know, maybe five, if you count rock and roll music, all the Beatle originals are good, you know. And you can make an argument for Mr. Moonlight is interesting. But, of course, Kansas City, hey, 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 the Paul McCartney garbage really is a skin cancer that is attacking side one, unfortunately, for Beatles for sale. But, you know, conceptually, had this all been original, had the Beatles listened to me, when back there, when I was only one year old, and you know, or minus one in '64, uh, my spirit was begging the Beatles, do all original albums, don't do covers. They wouldn't listen to me. George or Clark the Shark at one eight hundred four four nine eight two five five. But you know, you know what can I say? Eight days a week. Uh, you know, it's a Beatles hit. It's more of a hit than it, than it is a good song, but and, you know everybody knows it as a a Beatles classic, eight days a week. So, you know, Clark the Shark, I just gotta fall in line with eight days a week on side two. You know, admit, you know, it's a catchy, it's a it's a great Beatles song. It may not be one of my favorite Beatles songs, but on this album, you know, considering No Reply, I'm a Loser, Babies in Black rock and roll music and i'll follow the sun you know eight days a week is sounding good you know on here and the cover of buddy Oli, words of love i like i like the beatles cover of words of love now you know honey honey don't by ringo you know it's kind of a reality song we all get married and then like you know honey she just something happens she she just don't anymore, you know. She wears a sandal over her feet. But, like, you get married, and it's like she don't. You know, oh, honey, honey, don't with a Ringo. A Ringo piece of shit song, get it off the album. You know, honey, don't. <laughs> you know, get it off the album, put on an original. But they got to give Ringo a song to sing. So they put on this fucking lousy song, this crap honey don't and it's like it's more than skin cancer it's like a, it's like melanoma it's not basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma see we're going into the sharky md it's you know it's like malignant melanoma on side two honey don't by with ringo singing it's just cancer that is now it's not just attacking side two it's attacking the whole album at 1-800-449-8255 but I, I like the lyrics to honey don't because it's 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 what really happens when you get married you know the, the loving ends of something at, at 1-800-449-8255 on the clock the shock show with george i'm gonna keep it a family show i'm gonna i'm just gonna you know i gotta keep it clean I'm not going to break down Honey Don't too much. I'm just going to tell you it's a piece of shit. It get it off the album. Now, of course, Every Little Thing, one of the greatest Beatles songs ever recorded, uh, comes out of nowhere on side two and just shocks this album and upgrades this album by so much, man. And, of course, yes, you know, John Anderson and Chris Squire and all the lads, they, they covered Every Little Thing on the yes i think it's on the yes album maybe not but yes does a cover of every little thing and it's an amazing version and of course the beatles version is is amazing on the clark the shark show at 1-800-449-8255 the clark the shark that wolfman jack on crack and i'm coming to you live from the golden eib sharkerphone to tell you that every little thing is amazing i love that song when I was like eight and nine years old, I used to sing that down at Torrance Beach. I just remember collecting beer bottles or whatever I was doing. I was just a lonely lad collecting bottles at the beach. I was singing every, every little thing she does. She does for me, yeah, when I'm walking beside her. <laughs> I love every little thing at 1-800-449-8255. And of course... 
I don't want to spoil the party, so I'll go. Another amazing Beatles original, Tight Harmonies. I think John is like just singing with himself there. He's doing his own backups. I, I don't know if Paul... I mean, Paul comes in on one of the like refrains, uh, but John often does his own backup vocals, I notice. You know, and uh, sometimes... It seems like John Lennon dominates Beatle albums, you know, especially in the early days. Like Paul can barely even get a song, and of course neither can George. But I love I Don't Want to Spoil the Party. It's such an amazing song. I love it. I lo it makes Beatles for Sale awesome. So all of a sudden you're discovering like seven or eight amazing songs. And what you're doing, you know, as much as I hate Paul McCartney... I like what you're doing. It's, you know, it's all right, man. For Paul, who oh, thinks who you are? You're always knocking and slagging me music. Oh, but that time, Paul, I can't slag what, what you're doing. Even George likes it. I love what you're doing, man. It's a cool song, man. It goes right with every little thing. Every little thing by John. I love that song. And, you know, sometimes I get sick of what you're doing, but I can, you know, I dig it. There's something about these Beatles for sale, experimental songs. It's This is kind of like the Beatles' first revolver, where they don't really know what they're doing on Beatles for sale. And they're poking around, looking for ideas. And they got acoustic guitars and ambient, like, Baroque pop songs. And it's cool, man. I... I fucking love it. Uh, eight days a week, words of love, every little thing, and I don't want to spoil the party and what you're doing. I mean, so far, five of the six songs are good on side two. And the, the very last song, everybody's trying to write a song that sucks. Everybody, well, they dressed me up from a tree. They gave George a song to sing, and it fucking sucks. Everybody's trying to be me, baby. Everybody's trying to be George's baby. They could have given George an original, but this song fucking sucks. At 1-800-449-8255. So, as you can see, there's a lot of amazing originals on this album, Beatles for Sale. There's incredible original ideas, and there's developing ideas all over this amazing album. But unfortunately, EMI Parlophone wants the Beatles to still do covers. And a lot of those covers suck. Like Kansas City, hey, hey, hey. And everybody's trying to be me, baby. Everybody's trying to be George's baby. A fucking song sucks cock. At 1-800-449-8255. The Fabulous Clark, The Shark Show. boo doo 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 doot And that's me review of Beatles for Sale 1964. It could have been a much better album, man. If the Beatles would have listened to people like me, it made an all-original album here. After A Hard Day's Night. Before Help. This album would have been amazing. It's still amazing because I respect the original songwriting on Beatles for Sale. I love these songs. No Reply, I'm a Loser. Really meaty, meat and potatoes songs. Not really hits, you know, not except for the one, you know. <laughs> you know the one on side two that starts it out. Ooh, I need your love, babe. Hold me. Love me, you know, John. But other than that song, that's a big hit. It's just really good, solid, meat and potato songs on this album. Uh, the originals, anyway, by the Beatles. And those covers, they suck. Kansas City. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Everybody's trying to be me, baby. <laughs> Oh, it could have been great, Beatles. As it is, I still love it. Beatles for Sale, 1964, The Clark the Shark Show. 
the fabulous Clark the Shark show where you didn't die and go to heaven. All you did is you died on fentanyl or marijuana or LSD. You just died for a little bit and you went to heaven at Little Sharky's underground garage where I reviewed the Beatles for sale. And I'm giving it a good review. I'm not like this TikTok YouTubers or Rolling Stone or fucking douchebags. Or, you know, they don't know the Beatles. Don't listen to them. You listen to Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255. The Clark the Shark Show. The Wolfman Jack on crack. I'm coming to you from the golden EIB Sharkerphone. And you just heard the word, baby. You just heard the true testimony. The only review you will ever, ever, ever need about Beatles for sale. You don't go to TikTok douchebags. You don't go to YouTube douchebags. You go to Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255 and the Clark the Shark Show. Little Sharky's Underground Garage. It's better than Little Steven, baby. Forget that guy from Bruce Springsteen. He don't know about an underground garage. You go to Little Sharky and you get a review of George and the Beatles. The bloody Paul. I like your review so much I won't even sue you. You know what? I'm going to get on me phone to my lawyer. Uh, I'm, I've changed me mind. I won't sue you now. Clark the Shark at 1-800-449-8255. The Clark the Shark Show, baby. Beatles for sale, 1964. It's a great album, great original songs. Unfortunately, it's got all that co cover all over it. You know, the cover is cancer, but the originals are fucking killer here. And I want you to buy this Beatles album at Spotify, iTunes, Amazon today. Go buy it today, March 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2023. Buy some Beatles. Paul will be like, hey, hey, dude, don't put... I'm worth 500 million, and I sue people, but if you buy the Beatles, you know, I'll give you a pass on the Clark the Shark Show. Yeah, that's right, 1-800-449-8255, the Beatles forever, just make sure you buy our album. You just heard the testimony, the word from the Clark the Shark Show. And I'm out of here, my brothers. I love all of you. Peace.